I got down to some little place there, a bridge, and uh, Towns have run out of vodka. <laughs> he drank a whole case of vodka? Well, I was helping him some in the evening. <laughs> Do you have his guitar with him, or just... No, I don't oh. have a guitar. We've seen a lot of things, you know. Deer, Havelina, you know, we've seen them. You know, we just come paddling up, paddling down that real, you know, silent little ripple, still water, you know, paddling down the middle of the river, and all of a sudden we came up from about... 50 to 75 pounds of wind for them and all down there get some drinks. Well, they all jumped up and bumped into each other. And we could see deer. And, uh, it was pretty interesting. We didn't do any fishing. How'd you, what'd you eat? I forget what we did eat. Uh, wasn't much. Uh, sardines. Uh, sardines and vodka. I remember we took some sardines and crackers and uh, coffee. And, uh, yeah, we didn't take that much. Just barely enough to get by. And uh, so we get down there. Towns went to this little town. As the other guy was there with his canoe underneath the bridge there. And Towns asked him about this town. He said it's about four miles in the town down there. And uh, he said the first thing Towns said is they got a liquor store. And he said, yeah, they got one on the highway out there. And so he just he said, well, uh, And they camped out here and we said, uh, yeah, I'm waiting for somebody to come pick me up. He said, well, we're going to leave our canoe here and uh, we're going to try going into town. He said, all right. He said, all right. Our boat didn't know we never touched it and when we got back, it was still there. And uh, so we was hitchhiking in the town and this young, and we didn't have any money. The town was going to have to make a call. We got some money wired up there or something. And, uh, he didn't take any money with him on the trip? No. He didn't have any money. Or something happened. And, uh, but I had an ounce of weed. And, uh, this young guy could be there and uh, drive my truck. And he wanted to you know, uh, take us into town. And he said, yeah, sure, I think. We're driving down the road. And I said, uh, said we're kind of short of money. I said, uh, would you be interested in buying a bag of weed? He said, you got a bag of weed? I said, yeah. He said, yeah, man. How much you want for it? And I told him, you know, I said, well, if you take us up there, the liquor store, and we find out how much uh, uh, how much a bottle of, uh, bottle of vodka is, and uh, and you bring us back here. That's 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 what that we would call. And he said, "Yeah, man, I had real bad treatment here. That's too bad." Man. Was this weed that you grew out at Grandpa's when you were living up on that hill by then? Or yeah, before it was, then? yeah, I had grown it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, was, it, was, it was some good stuff. Buds, all the buds. And, you know, we smoked a lot, of weed, a lot of weed back then, drank a lot of beer. I did. So did you, did you get the, uh, did you procure the yeah. vodka? Yeah, sure did. Come back and kind of said, well, that's 
Ain't that lucky? I said, yeah, sure is. And he just slapped me on the back. And so at the same time, he said, you want to go on? You want to you go further on the town? I said, no. He said, I think I about had it. And so he stopped up there and gave Janine a, a call. That was his wife. He said, could you come out here to this certain place and everything and pick me and do it up with me? We're ready to go to the house. We've had enough to do it. And she came out there and laughed. I said, I didn't think y'all would make it all the way up there now. It was quite a way. The towns hadn't been used to doing that. You know, he'd paddle for a little while and he'd get that off. And then sometimes he couldn't paddle. You know, because the water was so shallow that I'd just get out and pull the boat. Of course, there wasn't no problem pulling it. You know. There was enough water to pull it, but just not enough water to paddle. You know, get me get in and paddle. Yeah, we had we had a pretty good time that time. It was, he needed it to get away from everybody. And uh, did he ever come out there to Grandpa's? Yeah, he did. he did. He did. He met Grandpa. I think so. I think he did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was before. I, uh, that was before he moved out there and married your mom. And. Uh, I wonder what Grandpa thought of him. Well, Daddy didn't think nothing about him. I, uh, you know, I was running around with people that come, all kinds of people out there. Did you go, ever go on tour with him? Uh, no. I never went on tour with him. See, they had these companies that, you know, take care, handle all that kind of stuff, you know. And, uh, they already had all the people organized and stuff. He, he didn't go on too many tours until after he, he did Poncho and left him. They sent him some, around to some places. He used to play, uh, you know, like uh, big halls, you know, where there were other artists there, like uh, Jerry Jeff Walker and, and uh, Robert Duvall. And, you know, a lot of uh, uh, folk musicians, you know, would be there. And uh, what's, his, what's his name and that in Houston? Uh, uh, I forget what his name was. Big folk musician, folk musician John Prime. And, uh, But yeah, I never went on any of them. But he uh, packed it all up and uh, moved back to Nashville. He moved to Nashville? Yeah, he did. And uh, they pulled lightning out of the water. And he had a sailboat too. And I took care of both of them. You did? Yeah. What do you mean, you sold them or what? No, I just took care of them. Oh. Uh, you gotta, you gotta. Maintenance? Yeah, you gotta polish that teak wood all the time. Especially on sailboats, you gotta stay right on that wood. What kind of sailboat did he have? Uh, I forget. It was a uh, it was a one sleeper. Like there was a bedroom, a uh, mattress up front, and the kitchen area. And the oh, table. okay. It had a little living quarters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It was, it was uh, a soup, I think. What you call it. Did he ever come over to the house uh, uh, whenever uh, 
when you had us, your mom had us? Uh, no, he had already gone back to Nashville by then. So yeah, that was I'd, see him, I'd see him every now and then when he'd come down to play uh, uh, at uh, the old quarter and he would play uh, uh, over at the old uh, I can't even think of the name of the place now. Got such a prominent place. Fitzgerald's. The yeah. Fitzgerald's. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw yeah. shows there. Over there on the other yeah. side of the bio. Yeah, on the other side uh, of the hall. It used to be an old polka hall. And upstairs they had a... Uh, that's where the hall was. Yeah, well, the later on they had a downstairs too. But, uh, yeah, they'd have folk nights there. And then he played that... Uh, uh, and then he'd go out there and play uh, out there uh, Lightning and Hopkins had it. He owned the whole, he owned the whole strip there. You know, uh, he loved playing with them, uh, them old black guys. Sounds pretty good on the guitar too. Very good slide guitar. And oh, the uh. But the after he moved to Nashville, he uh, they had some big high step, steps going up to his cabin, and uh, he uh, lost his balance and uh, fell down and uh, broke his hip. And they took him into town and told him, "Yeah, well, you broke your hip." They said, uh, "Just go home and." Uh, Lay up and don't move around and try to take care of yourself. And he went home and what had happened was there was a blood clog in there. And the blood clog uh, came loose and he killed him. So he died there in there. That was in the late 90s, right? Mm hmm I guess so. Yeah. I remember I called you whenever the day he, he died. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, he 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 wasn't he wasn't somebody that you would think would be that way because he wasn't that kind of musician. You know, uh, he didn't like to fight. He was, you know, nonviolent type of guy, so you wouldn't expect too much. And if it was somebody that was kind of getting, you know, angry, he handled it in a really humorous way. You know, where he couldn't hardly say anything because he knew he was gone. And, uh, oh, let's see. It reminded me of something else. Was he well received in the. Uh you know the clubs uh, like that Lightning Hopkins would play in because back then yeah. oh, weren't the they, clubs kind of segregated? Yeah, you were the only one there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were the only one. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. If Lightning was sitting there, you better not touch that man. <laughs> that was his guess. And it was a club, you know, so they did have some old white guys that played in that club, but not too many. But I mean, the uh, the people that would come see them were they were they mainly segregated? Because you know this is late '60s, '70s, so oh yeah, yeah it was well, just Lightning Hopkins right. on that whole street. Yeah, the whole street. But was it considered a black club? Yeah, yeah, he, he, big old two-story old style uh, with veranda like a French Quarter or something and you know you know you know like New Orleans would be like a big you know with all the turnings and everything big veranda where they had a top floor and a bottom floor and there were barber shops uh, you know whatever but they were all black owned 
and uh, that was what he was asking. And, uh, but Towns was well was received on. there. Yeah, yeah, he was well received there. I remember one night we was out there at. Uh, because he liked to gamble, or oh, he loved gamble. I mean, but what was he well received because he liked to gamble, or because he played good music? No, because he played good music. Yeah, uh, yeah, and he liked them. But uh, yeah, he he liked all of them. Oh, uh, he liked all of them. Nash Lipskin, Alan Wolf. Yeah, he 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 loved all them old black people. Black people. He had a special place for them. And uh, you know, with their music, their their kind of music, you know. And uh, you know, kind of like the moving sidewalk. Well, later on, they became the what they call them. ZZ Top. ZZ Top. Yeah. You know, that was, that was, you know, they were brought up on, on that too, even in Houston. Houston is blues town. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we was out there in, in East Austin playing that, uh, there was a black club there. I was off of East, uh, Better, else or something. Sounds. That was uh, that was way before all the renovations oh, Vic went out there. Victory way. Grill. Yeah, it was something like that. It was a black club, and uh, Towns was playing there with somebody else, and, uh, and uh, this guy he was talking about gambling. This guy said, "Oh, you like to gamble?" I said, "Yeah." He said. You got a dice game out there in the alley. Town said, let's go shoot something. And so we took him out there and he said, and they had a 55, and I was with him, had a 55 gallon barrel drum turned upside down. And they had put a piece of duct tape, a piece of cardboard going around the back side about halfway, right? And when you throw your dice, your dice had to hit that back cardboard, you know, in order to count. Well, Tan go out there and uh, he won some, win some, and then he started winning. I mean, he started winning pretty good. He was into him for about $400. And Towns was going, boy, the dice are high up tonight, come on. You know, and he'd hit it, boy, and he'd hit it again. And Towns would laugh, pick up all the money. And I kind of started looking around, you know, and I seen these guys, a couple of them walked off, and then I was seeing somebody else kind of sitting over there kind of talking to each other, you know. And I was thinking, this ain't good. You know what I mean? This <laughs> ain't good. We got a bunch of their money. And they, you know, they're figuring, you know, that he's got, they even came over and checked the dice, you know. And, you changing them dice, I'm changing them. Give them to me. So, but here you play with these dice. I'm understanding every time you put them dice right there. Town is pretty nice to that down. Yeah. Town to pick you up and said, hold it, hold it, man. Turn his hand over. Town said, oh, no, I ain't shooting. I'm playing with your dice. Okay, go. And he hit one. And pretty soon he got into a lot of money, man. I was getting worried. They were going to jump us. They were going to jump us. They were going to jump us. They going to rob you. Hit me in the head. It ain't going to be pretty out here in the alley. Over here <laughs> in the middle of right now. And uh, you say what you want about them black singers. These boys are, these are, these boys are out here on the street. So uh, I didn't say nothing to him, I just kind of gave him a uh, little nudge and said, well, you want in game? I said, no, no, no. Kind of did my eyes like that, you know, where he'd kind of know that, you know, I've seen something.